All right, so this lesson is reviewing um, the kind of basic elements of trigonometry from most likely that what you learned in Math 10, uh, which we call right angle trigonometry. And so this is essentially all review. There may be a few parts that are a little bit new. Um, so here I have a right triangle, and the hypotenuse in this case is a side AC. And the definition of hypotenuse is the longest side in a right triangle. However, while that's the definition, What may be more helpful sometimes is to remember it's also always across from the right angle, uh, or it's opposite to the 90 degree angle. But the definition of it is the longest side in a right triangle. And so if we're not dealing with a right triangle, if there isn't a 90 degree angle in it, then there is no hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is specific to a right triangle. So some other terms. I mentioned opposite. Well, opposite is kind of across, and adjacent is beside. So for example, if we talk about the side adjacent to A, that means here's angle A. From that angle there, or that point there, what side is adjacent to it? It's this side right here, AB. I know it's AB because AC is the hypotenuse. It's kind of a special side. So the side adjacent to A is just AB. And the side adjacent to C, which means I look at this point here, uh, is this side right here. Again, adjacent means the side that's right beside that point, but not the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is its own kind of special side, so B, C. And the side opposite to A, um, that's going to be this side down here. It's across from angle A, um, or corner A, and so it's B, C. And the side opposite to C, means we're looking here, we look across, and the side opposite to C is A, B. And again, this is all meant to be review. I want to go through this quickly if it was brand new. All right, so the three primary trigonometric functions are or ratios, I'll say right now, are sine, cosine, and tangent. And usually for sine, we just abbreviate it S-I-N, cosine, C-O-S, tangent, T-A-N. And so sine is a ratio for the opposite side of a right triangle divided by its hypotenuse. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And so we tend to remember sine, cosine, and tangent like this. All right, and so in this case, if I look at this right triangle, and I'll draw the right angle in, the sine of C means from this angle here, this corner C, um, the sine of C is the side opposite from it, so AB. divided by the hypotenuse, which is AC. So the side length of AB divided by the side length of AC, that's the sine of C. And if I knew those side lengths, I could substitute AB with a number, whatever the measurement is. Right now, I don't know what it is. And so the cosine of A would be AB over AC. And the tangent of A would be, again, the side looking at angle A, the side opposite from A, which is BC, divided by the side adjacent to A, which is AB. Again, the tangent ratio is the only one of the three that does not involve the hypotenuse at some point. And in general, if we want to label a side, and we have, if we have our vertices labeled ABC, or corners or angles, however you want to look, about, look at them, um, you can always label a side by mentioning two letters, say, you know, again, AC or CA is the side of the hypotenuse that connects these two vertices together. All right, so let's use these now. Let's use these primary trigonometric functions or ratios to find some missing uh, measurements. So for this triangle here, I want to find the measure of theta. Again, that theta is a letter, it's a variable, it's a Greek letter, and quite often by convention we use it to denote an unknown angle. So how can I figure out this angle? Well, from this angle, I know two sides. I know the side that is adjacent to it, and I know the side that is opposite to it. I don't know the hypotenuse, but I don't need it either. So I'm not going to label that, because I don't care about it. So from that angle theta, I know the opposite side, I know the adjacent side. Well, only the tangent ratio involves opposite and adjacent sides. So I can say the tangent of theta. I don't know what the angle is, but I know the tangent of it must equal the opposite side. 3.6 divided by the adjacent side, 5.6. And so how do we figure out the angle? Well, I want to use the inverse tangent function. And so I know theta will be the inverse tan of 
3.6 divided by 5.6. And I can type all of this into any scientific calculator. And so the inverse tan of 3.6 divided by 5.6 is approximately 32.7. And if your calculator is in degree mode, that's the number you should see. You want to make sure your calculator is always in the right mode. And in this course, we'll only be using degrees, although there are other ways of measuring angles. And so 32.7, 33 degrees, that's that angle right there. And again, this is meant to be review. So yes, I'm doing this quickly because we, we've learned this before. Okay, let's look at this one. I want to find the measure of side x. And so from that side, what do I know? Well, I have one angle up here, 38 degrees. And from that angle of 38 degrees, I know one side, and that's the adjacent side. So I know the side adjacent to 38 degrees. I'm trying to find the hypotenuse, so I'll label that. This side down here, which is opposite of 38 degrees, I don't care about it, I don't know it, I don't need to know it, so I'm not going to label it. All right, so now I'm set up, because if I want to figure out x, um, I have to use the cosine ratio. And I know I'm going to use the cosine ratio, because only cosine involves the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So this time I say the cosine of my angle, but this time I know the angle, it's 38 degrees. Last time I didn't know it. It was my theta. So I know the cosine of 38 degrees equals the side adjacent, 6.1, divided by the hypotenuse, which I don't know, x. OK, and now I want to solve for x. Various ways of approaching it. Um, you know, I could multiply both sides by x and then you know, multiply like that. Um, however, quite often for situations like this, cross multiplying is quite helpful. Anytime I have uh, one ratio equaling another, where I have a single unknown, you can always find the unknown by first looking at your ratio and find the value, the two values that you know that are diagonally across from each other, which in this case is 6.1 times 1, and multiply those together, well, 6.1, and then take that and divide by what's left, which is the cosine of 38 degrees. And that will tell me x. And so at this point, I would just go to my calculator and type 6.1 divided by the cosine of 38 degrees. And my calculator will tell me approximately 7.7 .7 centimeters in this case by looking at the units. So once I had my ratio set up, I could solve it really, really quickly. And I'm going to go back to this idea of cross multiplying a lot because it's quite helpful for this. And it's quite quick. But in the end, you know, there's various approaches. It all leads to the same thing. All right, so let's look at this one. Again, I want to find another angle. So I don't know theta. From that angle, though, I know the hypotenuse. And I know the side adjacent to it. So the only trigonometric ratio that involves adjacent and hypotenuse that we've learned about is cosine. And so I'll say the cosine of theta equals adjacent side, 10.2, divided by the hypotenuse, 10.6. And so again, I don't know the angle, so how do I figure it out? I need to use the inverse cosine function. So theta will be the same as the inverse cos of 10.2 over 10.6. So this right here, this step here, was the most important part. Once that's set up, it's a matter of just going, it's kind of routine. I type this into a calculator, and as long as I'm in degree mode, I should get about 15.8 degrees. And that's theta. Looking at this one, hopefully I can keep doing these nice and quickly. I know the angle. I know the side that is adjacent to the angle. And I'm trying to find the side, there's the x, hard to see there. I'm trying to find the side that is opposite from the angle we know. And again, I don't care about the hypotenuse, so I'm not going to label it. So in this case, I have an opposite side, an adjacent side I'm dealing with from the angle. That's the tangent ratio involved, though, so the tangent of 34 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, so in this case, x over 8.1. And now I can solve for x. And again, there's lots of ways of approaching it. I would, I'm going to be consistent here, and I'll make this tan 34 look like a fraction by saying it's over 1. I'm going to find the pair of values that I know that are diagonally across from each other. In this case, it's the tan of 34 and 8.1. They're diagonally across from each other, so I multiply them together. And then I divide by what's left divide by 1, so I don't even need to do that. So in the end, all I have to do is 8.1 times the tan of 34 degrees. 
And if I do that, I should get about 5.5 centimeters. All right. So at this point, um, I'll see these extra quickly because I've done so many examples like it. For this one, I want to use the tangent ratio again, and it'll be the tangent of theta. In this case, it would be 6.7 over 4.3. And so theta would be the inverse tan of 6.7 over 4.3. Go to your calculator, you should get about 57.3 degrees. And again, I did that so quickly just because I've done so many examples similar to this. And for this last one, I'm trying to find this x. And for this one, um, my right angle, I should show it's up here. So this 9 centimeters is a hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle. And x is opposite from the angle we know of 34 degrees. So I'm going to use the sine ratio here. So the sine of 34 degrees equals opposite, so in this case, x over 9.0, or just 9. And then solve for x. I could just multiply both sides by 9. I could put a 1 here and cross multiply. In the end, x should equal 9 times the sine of 34 degrees, or about 5.0 centimeters. So keep in mind, what I've just done, especially on this page, is essentially, you know, almost a unit of math 10, a very short unit, or a chapter at least. Um, and with a little bit of practice, it, it comes together quite well. I mean, there's not a lot of variety of questions we can ask here. I can rotate triangles around, but it's the same idea. Either if you're finding an angle, you're going to use the inverse function at some point. If you're finding a side, you're going to use just sine, cosine, or tangent. So one thing that now may be new is what we call special triangles or special angles. And so this, is this triangle here, uh, which has a 30, 60, and a 90 degree angle is a, we call a special triangle. It's, we see these angles a lot, 30, 60 degrees a lot. And if you have a triangle like this, and if, you know, that means there's always going to be a shortest side. And, this, and if we call that shortest side one unit, one centimeter, one kilometer, whatever, one unit, well, there's always a longest side. And the longest side, which is going to be the hypotenuse, is always exactly twice the length of the shortest side if you have a triangle like this. And so if the shortest side is one, the longest side must be two. And there's always a side in between. And the side in between is always root 3. Not 3, root 3. And if we can memorize these three lengths, we can memorize any triangle that's similar to this triangle that has these same angles. So again, don't think all 30, 60, 90 degree angles, sorry, triangles have to have a hypotenuse that's exactly two units. But what they always have is that the shortest side is always half the length of the hypotenuse. Or the hypotenuse always, is always twice the length of the shortest side, always. And the other special triangle is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which for this, if you have a triangle with two angles of the same, there must be two sides of the same. So if this side here is one unit, then this side here must be one unit. And the longest side is the hypotenuse again. In this case, it's root two. You could use the Pythagorean theorem, there's various ways, but again, it's not two whole, it's root two. And root two is not a rational number, but it's still a number bigger than one. And so you want to memorize these. Like when I say memorize these, I mean literally memorize these two triangles. Memorize the, you know, where the angles, where the various side lengths are. Um, memorize that, these two images. Because if we know that, we can use that to find all these exact values without using a calculator. For example, the sine of 30. Well, here's a 30 degree angle. From 30, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I look at this triangle, I know the sine of 30 degrees must be exactly 1 divided by 2. And if you go to your calculator and type in the sine of 30, it'll say 0.5. But I don't need that. I have it right here. The sine of 60, I can look at this triangle now, or this angle, I mean. And sine, again, is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it's root 3 over 2. And I can do the same thing for all of these. And so the cosine of 30 must be root 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 must be a half. The tangent of 30, again, if we look at this 30 degree angle, tangent is opposite over hypotenuse. Sorry, opposite over adjacent. So it's 1 over the square root of 3. 
and the tangent of 60 is the other way around, it's going to be root 3 over 1, or just root 3. And so again, if we have these two triangles memorized, we can figure out all of these out without a calculator. And similarly, if we have this triangle memorized, I can find the sine of 45. The sine of 45, look at that angle there, or this one here, they're both the same. I'll just pick one of them. Sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse, so it's 1 over the square root of 2. And cosine is going to be the same thing. And tangent will be opposite divided by adjacent, or 1 divided by 1, or just 1. So again, uh, if we have these two special triangles memorized, which again is an expectation of this course, then we can have we can quickly determine all of these values here quickly um, and eventually uh, we want to memorize these but not so much for this course that's really important for pre-calculus 12 to have these memorized right now for this course the most important thing is having these special triangles memorized because then you can figure out all these and so that leads me to my last problem which is without a calculator how can I find the area of this equilateral triangle so first, equilateral triangle means all sides are the same length. So all these are the same length. What it also means is all the angles are the same, which means all these angles must be 60 degrees. Because all angles in any triangle add up to 180. If they're all the same, they have to each be 60. So how to find the area of a triangle? Area is base times height divided by 2. Well, the base I know, 20, 20 centimeters. I don't know the height. So that's really what my work is. How can I figure out the height? The height is this distance straight up and down. So how can I figure out that? Now let's focus on this. If I draw the height, I have drawn, I can draw two right triangles that are exactly the same. So I'll focus on just this triangle right here. So if I look at this triangle, what do I know about it? Well, I know there's a 60 degree angle in one corner. I know it's 30 degrees up here. And I know the base from here to here is 10 centimeters. But I also know this is 20 centimeters. Well, how can I use that to find the height without a calculator? Because I mean, if I could use a calculator, I could use the Pythagorean theorem, or I could use you know, a whole bunch of options, all of which are fine. But hopefully that triangle I just drew in green, if you look at it, if it looks familiar, 60 degrees, 30 degrees. That's kind of the same thing I have right here. And so again, I said that any triangle that has a 30, 60, 90 angle degree angles inside them must have these proportions where the longest side is always exactly twice the length of the shortest side. And so if I look right here, I can actually see that already. The longest side is exactly twice the length of the shortest side. What about the height? Well, if I look back here, the side in the middle is root 3 if this is 1. So, for example, if I go back to my diagram here, let's say for a moment it wasn't 20 and 10 centimeters. Let's say it was just 2 and 1. Let's say this was 2 centimeters, and let's say this was 1 centimeter. Well, then the height would be root 3 centimeters. Okay? But it's not 1 and 2, it's 10 and 20. They're 10 times more which means the height must be 10 times more than root 3. There's my height, 10 root 3. So the height of this triangle is 10 root 3 centimeters. And now I know everything I need. This is 10 root 3. And so now I can kind of clean this up. Uh, I have, for example, I guess I'll go, I'll go 200 times the square root of 3 over 2. But simplify this down to 100 over 1 or just 100, and I have 100 times the square root of 3 centimeters squared is the area of that triangle. And so in the end, I was able to find the exact area. I didn't round anywhere. I didn't need a calculator. Um, and it brought me back to these special triangles right here. And really, these last few things, special triangles, that may be new. If you did learn about it in grade 10, it's kind of supplemental. You didn't have to. But now it's something we will start to see more and more in this and going forwards in this unit. All right, that's the review part done.